Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to talk about entry-level shotguns, specifically the Beretta Outlander A300 versus the Stoger M3000. But before that, my name is Elliot and this is Freelance Duck Hunting. If you're into duck hunting or goose hunting, you might want to go ahead and hit subscribe because I video every single one of our 30 to 35 hunts we go on every season and also have a lot of other content well. So if you're a waterfowler or a duck gunner, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So let's talk a little bit about the Beretta Outlander and the Stoger um, in case you're in the market for one of these shotguns. First of all, let me say I think that both of these shotguns are excellent entry-level semi-automatics. These are on the lower end price range of semi-automatics, so if you're upgrading from a pump and you'd like to get a semi-automatic, I certainly would say these guns are a good starting spot. Now, if you look on the internet and you start searching for reviews on the Outlander and reviews on the Stoger, either the M3000 or the M3500, um, everyone pretty much loves these guns and say that, there's, they're, that they are great. Um, and so I, I don't think ultimately you can go wrong Either way, the Beretta Outlander A300 is a gas-operated semi-automatic. Now, I wasn't quite sure exactly how that functions, so I did a little bit of research. And if you look on this image here, you can see um, how, how the, the gas operating system works. When the shell is fired, um, it siphons off a little bit of the pressurized gas and it uses that through a piston, and that is what cycles your next shell. It's a gas-operated system. Now, this system is supposed to be a little dirtier because it catches some of that carbon, and you have to clean your gun maybe a little bit more often. Um, the Stoger uses what's called an inertia-driven or recoil uh, to cycle its shells, and that is basically you've got pressure going out of the tube, and it uses that pressure as the force the other direction on a spring, and the inertia or the recoil or the force is what pushes that, that, that spring or that coil back and forth. And that is what causes to cycle the next shell in. Now, the, the Beretta Outlander is comes in a 28-inch barrel. It only shoots three-inch shells, two and a three-fourths or three-inch shells. You cannot get uh, three-and-a-half-inch shells into the Beretta Outlander A300. It comes in a black synthetic camo and also a wood stock. Now, this gun is priced somewhere between $650 and $800. If you really get searching hard and look for rebates, you can get it under $650. In fact, I found $100 off on Cabela's Online when I got mine, and I actually got mine right at $600. And the Breda is about a just over a 7-pound shotgun. Now, the Stoger M3000 is 7.3 pounds. Again, it's inertia-driven. You can get it in a camo or black Synthetic. I have not seen anything outside of those two. You can get that in a 28 inch or a 26 inch barrel. And the M3000's price for about five to six hundred dollars. Now, Stoger does make an M3500, as I mentioned before. And the 3500, the only difference that I can find in it is it takes a three and a half inch shells. The M3000, which only takes the three inch shells, you can get anywhere between five and six hundred dollars. So it's a little bit cheaper uh, than the A300 Outlander. The M3500, which takes the three and a half inch shells, is going to be right around the same price as your A300, six hundred to seven hundred. Now, as I was researching these online, it did seem to me that the general consensus was that the Beretta Outlander was a little bit better shotgun, but I did not see anyone providing any reason as to why that was. I couldn't find a single actual reason as to why people might think that the Breda was a better shotgun, but it seemed like I looked I looked on a lot of forums and read articles, and it's like I said, it seems like the consensus is, is the Outlander is a little bit better. I don't see why, and I, I tend to, I don't really even agree with that from my own personal experiences. I think that they're probably pretty much identical. So the only difference is, is the inertia versus the gas operated system. And I really couldn't find anywhere that said which one of those was better other than the fact that the gas operated was a little bit dirtier and you had to work with the cleaning a little bit more. And it also has a few more parts. If I was going to pick which, if I could go back in time and do it again, I think what I would probably do is get the Stoger M3000 because I don't think there's a much of a difference between your Outlander and your Stoger. I really, really don't. And the Stoger is just a little, the Stoger M3000 is a little bit cheaper, about a hundred bucks cheaper than the Outlander A300. Now, I would love to hear from you guys. If you are a Beretta guy and you think that Berettas are better than Stogers, could you please comment down below? But don't just say they're better. Please give a reason. People who own Stogers absolutely love them. People who own Beretta Outlander A300s absolutely love them. I would not be afraid to shoot either gun. And I, if I were looking for an entry-level shotgun, 
at about a $550 price, I think the Stoger M3000 is the one that I would get. I never shoot three and a half inch shells, and I don't think any of that's the one I think I would go for just out of cost. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, again, uh, comment and tell me what you think. I'm going to do a couple more of these series of shotguns. I'm going to compare the Remington 870 and the Mossberg 500 and maybe talk a little bit more about gas-operated versus inertia as well. So thank you so much for joining me.